Well, Aesop had a fable about two eagles, one envious of the other because the other could soar higher and more elegantly than he could. So the envious eagle would actually pluck out his feathers and use them as arrows in an attempt to shoot down the high flying eagle. He didn't realize, however, that it was his own undoing. He never hit the ascending eagle, but was eventually grounded by his lack of feathers. So today we're starting a new series on the life of Joseph called Dreams. Joseph is often called the dreamer, and we'll see why over these next few weeks. But we're gonna learn that whenever God speaks a dream into our hearts, that there will always be opposition to the fruition of that dream. We realize that it is based in the conflict between light and darkness, the spiritual warfare, but is often manifest in the natural. So today we're talking about a God-given dream. This is different distinctly than us pursuing our dreams. We hear that in culture. We hear that in modern day society, pursue your dreams, follow your dreams, do what makes you happy. We read books about it. We hear about it on talk shows. It's, it's a message that is continually being articulated in our world today. But it's different than God's dream because our personal dreams and God's dream for our lives sometimes are diametrically opposed to one another. Sometimes when we follow our dreams, it actually moves us further away from God. You see, the Bible never tells us to pursue our dreams. It tells us to pursue God and his righteousness. And out of relationship, then God will download his dream in our hearts and trusting us with it. And he will walk with us in order to see it fulfilled. You see, then, as we refer again to Matthew 6, then it says, and all these things will be added to you. I believe there's power in that. I will tell you, there's been so many times in my life that, that there were things that I wanted so bad that I attempted to convince God it was him. That I had a way of justifying, God, this open door, this opportunity, this thing, God, this, this has to be for me. That after all, you would want me to experience this. You, you would want me to have this. But man, as I look in the rearview mirror, I realize that if God would have given me what I wanted, it would have been disastrous. It would have been harmful to me, my calling, my future would have negatively impacted my life. You see, a God-given dream is not only better than my dream, but it's sustainable through seasons of discouragement and trial and temptation in, in moments when we are overwhelmed and, and really wanna give up, we hold on to it. You see, a God-given dream is not something that we surrender easily. And we see this clearly in the life of Joseph. I want you to read with me Genesis chapter 37, beginning at verse one, says this, Jacob lived in the land of his father's sojournings in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old was past, pastoring the flock with his brothers. He was a boy with the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his sons because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a robe of many colors. 
But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. Now, Joseph had a dream and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, hear this dream that I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright and behold, your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers and said, behold, I've dreamed another dream. Behold, the sun, the moon, and 11 stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you've dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the saying in mind. So as we study the family dynamics of Jacob's family, we see out of the 13 children, 12 of them being sons, that Joseph was the favored son. In symbolic of this, his father actually bought him a coat or a robe of many colors to give to him. Now we see that as the brothers were observing this favoritism towards Joseph, it infuriated them, it angered them, and they became very resentful. So, so this is the atmosphere in which God gave Joseph two dreams. One of them was a dream of these sheaves of his brothers coming and bowing down to his sheep. Not only did he have that dream, but then he had a second dream and the dream was the sun, moon, and stars bowing down to him. Now, I will say that this God-given dream was entrusted to Joseph, and it was a picture of his future, and yet we see in this story that he didn't handle it very well. And you see, I believe today that God has given every single one of you a God-given dream for your life. And maybe today you're having a hard time articulating that. Maybe, maybe it's something that you've buried deep in your soul and, and God wants to resurrect. But all of us have a, have a God-given dream over our lives. And, and yet when God entrusts us with that dream, we have to learn to steward it well. We have to learn how to manage that dream. And so today I wanna share from this story two ways that God has called you and I to manage our God-given dream. I encourage you to write this down if you're taking notes or you can go to our YouVersion Bible app or live event, you can take notes there. But I believe this is something that will help you in the days to come. Number one, the first way is to be selective who you disclose your God-given dream to. It is interesting that as soon as Joseph had his first dream, he immediately tells his brothers. You see, not only did Joseph lack the wisdom and the discipline needed to process this dream as a 17 year old young man, but he opened his mouth to the wrong people. His brothers were already struggling with him they were already dealing with the favoritism they saw from his father that were causing feeling, feelings of resentment and hatred towards him. They were not for him and he knew that. You see, when God trusts you with his dream for your life, you don't just tell anybody and everybody. You see, there are some people that can't be trusted with the revelation that God has given you for your life. There are other people that will not be able to handle the magnitude of what God wants to do in you and through you as they observe your life. You, you have to be selective in who you share that God-given dream to. You see, like the envious eagle, there are some people, even in the church, that would pluck out their feathers to their own demise 
in order to keep you from ascending to the heights that God has for you. That's not the people you wanna tell the God-given dream to. That's not the people you wanna share that with. And that's why in Proverbs 21, 23, I believe it applies to many areas of life, but it applies to this context when Solomon says, whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. You see, it says that when Joseph told his brothers his dreams, they hated him even more. They were jealous of him. And so when he opened his mouth at the wrong time to the wrong people, it got him in trouble. And you can read the rest of the chapter and see what kind of trouble he got himself into because he didn't hold his dream to himself. I want you to compare that to the way Mary dealt with the dream God gave her concerning the birth, the virgin birth of the savior of the world. So the shepherds are speaking this over Mary about the birth of Jesus. And when everybody else was speaking out of speculation and everybody had an opinion and everybody had an idea, here's what it says. Here's how Mary held that God-given dream. It says in Luke 2.19, it says, Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. She kept some things to herself. She processed until the opportunity arose for her to speak to the right people at the right time what God had spoken to her. You see, when it comes to sharing what God has spoken to us, we have to exercise discernment of the Holy Spirit. You see, just like in any relationship, there are some things you're not gonna tell some people. There are some people you're not gonna open up your heart to. That it's something that you are selective about. It's something that you, you do carefully. And you see the context of the relationship will determine what we disclose. So I'm gonna help you today. Your God-given dream, what God has given you. Before you open your mouth and speak to somebody about it, I believe it would be good for you to answer these questions. The first question is this. Why am I sharing this information with this person? That's speaking about motive, right? So if it's the wrong motive, I probably need to be quiet anyway, right? If I answer this question, it may, I may not even have to answer the other questions. Why am I sharing this information with this person? Number two is what is the spiritual and emotional maturity of the person that I'm sharing this information with? because some people won't be able to handle it spiritually. Some people won't be able to handle it emotionally. So I need to be selective in making sure that who I'm sharing it with can handle what I'm about to say to them. And that leads to the third question, can they be trusted? How have they done in the past? How have they done with other things you've shared with them? What is their track record? because I'm not gonna share something that God trusts me with that somebody, to somebody I can't trust. That, that would be foolishness. That wouldn't be operating in the wisdom of God. And then lastly, will they support me in fulfilling God's dream for my life? And I will tell you that whenever God gives you his dream, it's bigger than you and it's better than anything you could ever imagine. In fact, it's something that really would cause you to have to exercise faith. It would be something that you would say, if God doesn't show up, there's no way this dream can happen. And so God wants you to bring people around you. God wants you to have advisors and mentors and spiritual people around you, a community around you that will help see God's dream fulfilled for your life. But you need to know if that person is the right person. Will they pray for me? Will they build my faith? Will they provide accountability for me? Will they celebrate with me? Amen? Amen. Make sure that you know these things as you're processing before you share them with that person. And that leads to the, to the second way we manage our God-given dream, and that is be modest in how you share your God-given dream. You see this younger brother with a beautiful, with a beautiful festive, colorful coat, 
who was already despised by his brother because they didn't get one. They were provided the same gift that their brother was. It was something that they were jealous of. But then he goes to them and he shares this first dream with his brothers. And they had some questions. They said, will you reign over us? Will you rule over us? They, they re, he realizes what's happening in the relational dynamic. And, and then he has a second dream. And instead of pondering it and holding it, he immediately goes to his brothers and he shares the second dream with them. Now, as I'm reading through the story, I don't know if he's dealing with small man syndrome. Like, like dude, I'm, I'm gonna make sure they know that they're gonna be under me, they're gonna be under my authority, they're gonna follow me, that I'm gonna be the leader, that I'm the man. You know, we, we don't know exactly what was going on here, but we, we, we know that he was kind of enjoying this idea of having leadership over them, that they would bow before him. It was almost like he was rubbing it in. I know you don't have any brothers or sisters that do that. And surely you're not one of them, right? But I want you to notice what happens next. And verse 10, it says, but when he told his father and his brothers, his father rebuked him. Do you see that? He rebuked Joseph and said to him, what is this dream that you've dreamed? Shall I and your brother, your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the saying in mind. Why did his father rebuke him? His father rebuked him because his ego was tainting the dream that God had given him. And literally, Daddy Jacob was giving his favored son, Joseph, a, a spiritual heart assessment. And he was doing it at the seeding of the dream to help him see it fulfilled because pride was about to take the dream out. You know, some people never arrive at their dream because of pride. Pride kills dreams. When we begin to believe our own press, when we begin to think we're better than we are, when we feel like we don't need God to see these things accomplished, we enter into a danger zone and a place of unfruitfulness, a place where it's barren, a place where we never really see what God really wants to do through us because our pride keeps us from receiving it. Pride's a blocker. If you're a vessel, pride's a blocker of what God wants to do in you and through you. In fact, this reprimand would help Joseph determine whose kingdom he would strive to build. Was it Joseph's kingdom or was it God's kingdom? It is extremely important for us to retain the right perspective in not only processing, but also verbalizing the dream that God has given us, that we are completely dependent on God for the fruition of his dream being accomplished in our lives. We are helpless on our own. We can't make it happen. The author of our story is the one who fulfills and writes the chapters. He, he's the one that accomplishes those things in us and through us. It's not because of who we are, it's because of who he is. So we can't let pride get in. Because James chapter four, verse six clearly says this, that God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And wouldn't it be a travesty to think the God who gave you the dream would oppose you and obstruct you in seeing the dream accomplished because you've allowed pride into your heart? Man, early on, 17 years old, man, man God is dealing with the pride in Joseph. Joseph's heart that would derail him of his destiny. And so today as we think about, man, the, the big thing, the, the, the large thing, the kingdom dreams that, that God has given us, we must know that they can't be accomplished without God. They can't be accomplished without his spirit moving in us. You see, while I believe there was course correction in Joseph's heart, the envy and jealousy that emerged in his brothers created a setback. And we read that 
As we continue Genesis 37, we see that Joseph traveled to check on his brothers while they were watching their sheep. And it says in verse 18 and 19, they saw him from afar and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. So his brothers come up with a scheme. They throw him in an empty well. There were some Midianites that were traveling through and they essentially sold him to them. They took his coat and they dipped it in an animal's blood and took that back to the father, Jacob, and let them know that your favored son was killed by a wild animal while it wasn't true. In the meantime, Joseph was taken to Egypt by the Midianites and sold to the captain of the guard, Potiphar. You see, essentially because of his brother's rejection and betrayal, Joseph lost all his rights and he was now a slave. The next few weeks, we're gonna talk about how, how to hold on to your God-given dream when life takes a turn for the worse. But today, I'm gonna close with this, asking you about your God-given dream that every single one of us have from the Lord. You see, God knew us before we, knit, we were knit together in our mother's womb and set us, a, set us apart for a very specific, very individualized purpose that's in alignment with his kingdom plan, that it's in alignment with what God is doing in this day and this time. So we don't wanna waste precious moments giving energy to things that will not matter a second into eternity. We wanna reach our destiny that we, ha we have, and it will only happen when we surrender to God and his dream for our lives. It is bigger, it is better than anything we could ever imagine. So I wanna close with this story about a man by the name of Wayne Cordero. I've observed Wayne Cordero from a distance for, for several years. I've read many of his books, but many of you may not know this, but it was his first day as a student at Eugene Bible College. He was only a three month old Christian. So at his first class, the teacher told them to turn to Jeremiah. So he actually turned around looking for the guy, Jeremiah, because he only had a New Testament and he, he had no idea what Jeremiah was. And so one of the fellow students looked at him and said, it's in the Bible, stupid. So he walked away dejected, he walked away discouraged, but then he went to his second class and his teacher by the name of Dr. Grace Flint asked each of them to write a paper. And the next day, she gave Wayne's back, with, Wayne's back with a note that said, thank you for being in my class, Wayne. Your insight and contribution were so refreshing in our discussion times. Your obvious zeal for Christ inspires us all. I look with great anticipation how God will use you for his purposes. Then Dr. Flint signed it with these words, the kingdom of God awaits you. He said, I had to read that over and over again. I read it probably 12 times that evening as I realized that somebody saw something in me that maybe other people didn't see. The kingdom of God awaits you. Dr. Flint said, Wayne dreaming of what God might wanna do with his life. Today, Wayne Cordero pastors a church in Honolulu, Honolulu Hawaii that 9,000 people attend each weekend and they planted almost 50 other churches. So I wanna to say to you today, every single one of you, I wanna say the kingdom of God awaits you. The kingdom of God awaits you on earth as it is in heaven, that the wishes of heaven be performed and fulfilled in your life and my life, right? But for that to happen, for us to, to live the dream of God, we have to surrender to the dream giver. And some of you in this room, maybe some watching online, do not have that relationship with King. You don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ. 
Maybe you've been living your dream and it could be a good dream. It could be a good dream that really is not, you're not, but you're not finding fulfillment. There's still something lacking or maybe, maybe your life represents more of a nightmare than a dream. No matter where you're at in the journey of life, I will tell you that when you encounter in relationship the dream giver, your life will drastically change and you'll move another direction. And when you wake up in the morning, your day will look differently. How you live will look differently. How you view people will look differently. And that's what God wants to do in every one of you today if you don't have a relationship with him. Amen, in first service, we gathered in our huddle and we prayed today that if there's souls that did not know him, they would encounter him today. So would you bow your heads with me? Father, we love you. And God, we thank you for this day. There's no other day like it. Today was created by you for your purposes. And God, we believe that one of those purposes are for people to know you, for people to encounter you. And Lord, there may be some that are in this room today. There may be some that are watching online that need a relationship with the dream giver. God, I pray that as you confront them, as you convict them, as you draw them, that they would understand, God, because Jesus took their place, because God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to, to become sin for them, that they could experience and encounter a relationship with you and be united with the God that created them. They could be brought into the family. God, I pray that you would give them courage today to say yes to you. God, that you would empower them to repent of their sin, turn away from their sin and turn to the God who loves them that has something better for them, that wants to bring their life into kingdom purposes even today. Lord, we ask you right now to speak, to give courage for people to say yes. Heads bowed, eyes closed across this place. You'd say, Pastor Quentin, that's me. I need a relationship with him. I'm not where I need to be. Maybe I've been living for myself. Maybe I've been living the life that the enemy has tempted me with, the enemy's lured me with, and I'm, but I know I'm not living my life for the dream giver. If that's you today, would you wave your hand at me so I can pray for you? Is there anybody here in this service that would just lift your hand high and say, that's me, that's me. I see that hand. Anybody else that would say, that's me. On the balcony, in the balcony, on the floor, anybody say, that's me. I see that hand, God bless you. Anybody else? I see that hand up there, God bless you. Anybody else that would say that's me? That's me. Church, would you stand? And as our prayer team comes, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give you words to speak what God's doing in your heart today. Whether you raised your hand or not, in a few moments, we're gonna ask you to come and even respond to this altar and let somebody pray for you. Let somebody pray for you as you begin your journey with Christ. There's others of you that have, have needs in other areas. We're gonna ask you to come as well. And then we're gonna close with a final, a final response that we believe God wants to speak. If you're watching online and that's you, please reach out to our online pastor and say, hey, I need Jesus as well. Would you, would you pray this prayer with me? Nobody should have to pray alone. So would you, would, can, can we pray as a church as well? Heavenly Father, we come before you today in the name of Jesus and we realize we are a sinner. We thank you that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus to die in our place and then you raised him from the dead and you told us that if we believe that Jesus died and rose again and we confess him with our mouth and with our life that we would be saved. So we receive your love. We receive your forgiveness. And we declare today, we are children of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, celebrate those that gave their lives to Jesus today. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. There's nothing better than that, church. Nothing better than that. And so again, 
if you responded to Christ, would you, would you let us know? Would you, would you come and receive prayer? But here's how I feel like the Lord's closing, closing out this day. And, and, and I really feel like this is you responding to the Lord. This is not you responding to Quentin. This is you responding to the Lord. That there's some of you today that you know God's given you a dream that's big. It's his dream. But because of fear, because of insecurity, because of anxiety, because of other people's words, that dream is just dormant. And God wants to release it today, right? There's others of you today that, man, you, you've, you've, you've kind of tried to find God's dream for you, but maybe you've kind of mixed it up with your dreams. And it's, you've been like a pinball in a pinball machine and you feel like, man, I've been all over, but, but man, I really wanna know. And here's the thing you need to know, the, the mysteries of God are meant to be revealed in relationship. So as you draw near to him, God doesn't wanna hide things from you. God wants to download his will, his desires. He told us to pray, your kingdom come on, on earth as it is in heaven, the wishes of heaven. He wants to bring them to you, but we have to surrender. And so today you're just saying, you know what? Regardless of where I'm at in life right now, maybe I've, man, I've tried to find my dream, but today I'm surrendering to the dream giver who gives me my dream, amen? So I'm, I'm gonna pray and then I'm gonna ask you as soon as I'm done praying to come and to respond today. Father, in the name of Jesus, give your people courage today, whether they're watching online or they're in this room. And I pray that as they respond to you, you would do a mighty work in their hearts to reveal your dream, to unleash your dream. God, we come against anxiety and fear and worry. God, we come against people's words. We come against, Lord God, this idea of, of God, we're, we're not the right person. We're not from the right city. We're not from the right family. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that, Lord God, you'd remove the lid off of people's lives as they surrender to you and let your dream be given to them and released in them. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, respond to him.